Somebody is definitely making some big money. It ain't me and you. I'm losing about $30 every day to gasoline. I think it's crazy. It's way too much money to be paying for gas. All of us could look better at how we use our resources. We must continue investing in new methods of producing ethanol. Using everything from wood chips to grasses to agricultural wastes. When the winds of change blow, entire industries spring to life. That has certainly been the case with alternative fuel sources, wind energy, solar power, and ethanol. None of these fuels are new, but they are the new media darlings and have won newfound support on Wall Street and on Capitol Hill thanks to the four-year run-up in oil prices. Entrepreneurs and insightful local governments have been quietly backing these alternative fuels long before they were grabbing headlines. Eric Will and his partners bought an abandoned Miller Brewing facility in central New York five years ago. The facility was a tough sell. Miller would not allow the site to be used for making alcoholic beverages. The only other use for these huge fermentation tanks was selling them for scrap. Will, who comes from a family of entrepreneurs, saw another possibility, brewing alcohol for cars, not people, ethanol. Today, it seems like the perfect fit, but five years ago, oil was a bargain at $25 a barrel. Neither Wall Street nor Washington had any interest in ethanol. Northeast Biofuel saw an opportunity, the task before them, create a business that could be taken seriously. We needed to have credibility, and um, a couple of guys buying a brewery touting that they're going to build an ethanol plant, that in and of itself doesn't, doesn't get it done. Uh, we realized that we needed to surround ourselves with very, very credible strategic partners. We went to New York two years ago to meet with the investment community and... Um, were they ready for it? They were n absolutely not ready, and they, they didn't even know the questions to ask. Um, and, uh, Times have changed, haven't they? They sure have. They sure have. And we did something creative with this project. With the help of our financial partners, we constructed a hedge program where for the first time the inputs into this plant, the corn and the natural gas, are linked in a hedging program to the output, the ethanol. Here's how it works. Purdue is a well-known poultry company. It will supply the plant with corn. After the corn is used in the ethanol process, it goes back to Purdue as dried grain. Purdue will sell those grains as a nutritional supplement for livestock. The other key partner is BOC Gases. It is the world's largest marketer of industrial gases. Instead of the CO2 being released into the air, it will be captured, cleaned, and resold by BOC. So the corn will be recycled into feed, the CO2 will be recycled, and of course, the entire plant is a recycled brewery. And that's, that had never been done, and as, as a result, we uh, received some pretty high credit ratings from the rating agencies and were able to finally attract the capital we needed to, to pull it off. And what kind of capital are we talking about? Because this is not just a, a, a turnkey operation you've got here. You've got to do some retrofitting. There's some changes that need to be made. Well, the overall cost of this project is on the order of $180 million. Because the bottom line with any of this, it, you do need the investment community to back it for it to go forward. <laughs> no doubt. Yeah. No you doubt. can't count on government or anybody else to, to fund that. Govern just government is, it becomes a partner. There's a lot of thinking out there that says government should be doing it all for us. And we don't agree with that. Uh, we, we clearly believe that they need to be a partner and they need to help. But at the, the end game, it's up to the private sector to make it happen. You, know, you said the project cost $180 million thereabouts. How much do you save by having this facility? Something on the order of $25 million. So there is definitely a cost savings by using an old brewery here. Not only a cost savings, but in, in our case, a, a time savings. It, given the construction that's going on in biofuels today, the lead time for some of these large uh, stainless steel structures that you see and some of the pieces of equipment that, we're, that we need to go in here are, are very, very long lead time items. Was so these big orange tanks, that will hold the ethanol? That's correct. And how many gallons did you say that was? One million each. One million each. And I see, noticed over there a smaller uh, tank. Yes, what that will that be the denaturant tank. 
To be able to ship ethanol, you have to cut it with gasoline. To Why is that? To poison it. Ah, because so otherwise you, it's, you got a big uh, tanker truck of uh, moonshine. Moonshine, <laughs> exactly. Rick O'Shea was one of the Miller Brewing Company employees who was laid off when the plant closed 13 years ago. But he's back as a construction superintendent. What to you is the real magic of what's happening at this uh, for this conversion? The real magic is to take a 30-year-old infrastructure that Miller abandoned in 1994 and just uh, breathe new life into it. As I said, uh, about 90% of that infrastructure that's inside those buildings and these, you know, a fermenter tank farm is going to be reused. 90% of it. Corn-based ethanol does have its limitations, even with the new efficiencies that Northeast Biofuels is bringing to the process. But what Wall Street and others who are financing these kind of deals are hoping for is what we'll call the holy grail of ethanol, cellulose ethanol. I don't have any illusions that we're going to get there tomorrow, but we need to get there because uh, we can't, as a nation, get to where we want to be on corn alone. It, it can't happen. It just doesn't have the efficiency that you need. Well, and sooner or later, you've got a supply issue, too. We are already seeing that play out. The demand for corn to make ethanol has driven up the price of corn as a commodity. So everything from animal feed to tortillas and, yes, ethanol is more expensive as a result. Cellulose ethanol is different. It uses the agricultural waste, which is plentiful, and it is not used in any other process. The cost of making ethanol will be much cheaper once that process moves from the lab to the plant. And so much of the trees that are harvested literally goes to waste. And so what now is, is, a, is, a, is a true waste product to somebody like an international paper company uh, could be a new revenue stream for them if we can cost effectively extract the fermentable sugars from the, from the hardwood residue, bring it here into our plant, ferment it and distill it. That would be a, a huge win-win. Pennsylvania is a corn importing state, but cellulosic ethanol, which uh, cellulosic ethanol comes from wood chips, wood fiber, and agricultural waste. And there's no state in the union that has more wood chips, wood fiber, and agricultural waste than Pennsylvania does. So the opportunities for growth in the cellulosic ethanol field are extraordinary.